Hello, my name is Alan Francis. I'm a psychiatrist. I was chair of the DSM-4 Task Force, former chair of the Department of Psychiatry at Duke, and recently have written two books, one called Saving Normal and the other, The Essentials of Psychiatric Diagnosis. Today we'll be discussing the relationship between substance use and psychiatric disorder. The very first thing any clinician must do in evaluating psychiatric symptoms is to rule out the possibility that medications or substances or alcohol may be involved in the evolution of those symptoms. Every single psychiatric symptom, every single psychiatric disorder can be mimicked by the use of substances. Now in the case of medication, uh, the elderly are by far the, the biggest victims of confusion. They're given way too many medications. The average geriatric patient these days is getting six or seven medications, many of them sometimes psychiatric, many of them completely inappropriate. Often these medications interact with one another and enhance the, the uh, side effects that they have. Elderly people have trouble clearing medications so that a dose that might be reasonable in a younger individual may be very, very difficult for an elderly person to tolerate. And worst of all, elderly people are preferentially given benzodiazepines. Benzodiazepines are pretty useless medications in everyone, but they're especially dangerous in the elderly. And paradoxically, they're three times more likely to be given to elderly patients. The problems with benzodiazepines are that they're very addictive. There are some people who can remain on low dose, but many people become hooked on them. Once hooked, very hard to get off benzodiazepine. The symptoms of anxiety during withdrawal may be much worse than whatever symptoms originally had the person start the benzodiazepine. And so these are medicines that are, are, are terribly um, difficult to control and should never be given to elderly people without a very, very strong indication, but they frequently are. The opioids are frequently being given to uh, the elderly for pain relief. And the combination of opioids and benzodiazepines are particularly uh, dangerous, particularly likely to result in psychiatric symptoms and can cause uh, overdoses and even death in, in, in people quite frequently. It's important to understand that any idiot can prescribe a medication. Deprescribing a medication, getting a patient off medication, is a high art. And too often now, people are prescribed psychiatric drugs for the wrong indications, the, uh, without a careful diagnostic interview. 80% of psychiatric medications are prescribed by non-psychiatrists. Very often, primary care doctors who have only a few minutes with the patient don't really understand psychiatric diagnosis or medications very well, and are likely to give um, very easily a medication that may wind up causing a lifetime of difficulty for that individual. No one should accept a psychiatric medication without being informed, without a thorough evaluation, without a consideration not just of the, of the benefits but also of the risks. And people who are already on psychiatric medications that may be causing psychiatric symptoms should not stop on their own. This is something that requires medical supervision. Withdrawal from medication causes its own uh, set of complications, sometimes very dangerous ones, particularly with the benzodiazepines. But it's crucially important that the prescription of medication be done carefully and that the deep prescription of medication be done with even, even more care. The particular dangers of the benzodiazepines are causing memory problems, delirium, falls, uh, and, and often the cognitive dysfunction is attributed to old age or um, other problems the individual may have had earlier in life due to psychiatric disorders. I have had the most remarkable positive results in my career taking patients off what had been too much medication that they had previously been receiving. Now we've emphasized the fact that medication is a primary cause of psychiatric symptoms in elderly patients. But nowadays, so many different age groups are taking medication that it has to be considered throughout the life cycle. With younger people, though, it's much more likely to be um, a, a drug of abuse and in some alcohol. And it's crucially important with every young person coming in to do a thorough history 
to try to determine the possible role of substances of abuse in their presentation. Middle-aged people and elderly people, alcohol becomes a very important factor in causing secondary psychiatric symptoms. It always has to be considered in every single evaluation. Never make a diagnosis of a primary psychiatric disorder without considering first the possibility of a substance of abuse, of alcohol, or of a medication. Now it becomes particularly difficult to determine causal relationships when a person is presenting with psychiatric symptoms and at the same time is using a substance or alcohol. Uh, the relationships can be complex so that in many instances the substance of abuse may be causing the psychiatric symptom. In some cases the substance of abuse may be a self-medication for the psychiatric symptom. In some cases they may be unrelated problems. Uh, very often it's very difficult to tease this apart. The only way really that one can have any confidence in doing this is to get the person off the substance and to see what they're like when they're no longer uh, actively intoxicated with the substance and when they're no longer withdrawing from its effects. Now that can take a month, sometimes longer, but uh, it's very hard to make a reasonable diagnosis psychiatrically without seeing the individual off medication in order to determine whether the, the uh, problems that they were presenting with were due to the medication or primary problems that would have presented anyway. And one has to consider the fact that even after withdrawal, a considerable pe period of withdrawal, some people will have psychiatric withdrawal symptoms even if they no longer are physi physiologically addicted to the drug. So there would, would have to be a period of at least a month and sometimes longer before one could be confident that the symptoms that persist are due, not due to the medication, that they're primary psychiatric symptoms. In practice, it's usually, unless there's an urgent psychiatric problem, suicide, delusional behavior, delirium, in practice, it's usually much more reasonable to attack the substance problem first rather than adding psychiatric medications to the mix. One of the most common problems these days is uh, physicians adding new drugs on when the symptoms that the person's presenting with may have been caused by the previous drugs that they were receiving. So in all use of medication and in all withdrawal of medication, caution is the most reasonable approach and not to make the patient worse, to first do no harm, not to add a new medication hoping that that will solve a problem that was caused by previous medication, not to chase the symptoms, but rather to take a mindful, thoughtful, cautious approach, trying to tease out the impact of the, the substances or medications the person's taking before adding more substances. I think all in all, we are in a situation where too many people are receiving too many drugs, and where the first tendency when there's a new symptom presenting is to add another drug, where very often the more proper response is to ask first in your own mind and with the patient the possibility that the symptoms they're presenting with are due to the drugs they're already taking. The role of substances, medication and alcohol in psychiatric presentations cannot be thought of enough and every time you see a new patient I would advise that you rule out the role of substances before jumping to a primary psychiatric diagnosis. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.